Thank you, Rick. Uh-huh. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ariel, how are you doing? Excellent. Yeah. That's why we can trust on CEOs to handle technology. <laughs> No, that's why, that's why we have to be resilient. <laughs> so we have, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we have an interesting panel with two uh, uh, in, entrepreneurs uh, from Africa and Latin America. So I, I would like to start by uh, you introducing yourself. So maybe we can start with uh, Juan Esteban. Uh, sure. Kevin, tell us a little bit about your company, your your uh, what are you doing, and and a little bit about yourself. Sure, Javier. Uh, hi to everybody. My name is Juan Saldarriaga. I'm an entrepreneur here in Colombia. Um, fintech space, lending platforms. Um, I'm co-founder of two of the uh, biggest uh, online lenders in, in Colombia, Rapi Credit, uh, which uh, we just passed a one millionth loan last month, and Juancho Te Presta. I'm also co-founder of the Colombian FinTech Association, was president for two years and a member of the board, and presently CEO of Juancho Te Presta, an online lender uh, targeting uh, um, gig economy uh, workers, um, Women in particular, we have uh, algorithms for for uh, for women. We're gender biased in the sense that women pay better, and we offer better terms for women. We believe in gender justice, and for that sense, we want to cater to to women in particular. And we started business uh, in November 2019. We've been uh, doing most of our loan book generation in during COVID, so it's been difficult times to originate um, uh, loans, but uh, thanks to uh, the help of uh, uh, FITER using Fineract and MIFOS as our core banking software, we have been uh, delivering good results uh, since. Um, I'm father of four, um, cyclist, mm. and um, well, that's a little bit about myself. Thank you, Juan. Um, Yuzoma from Nigeria, Lagos. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and Sparkle. You're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Javier. Great to be here. My name is Uza Madrizier. I've been in financial services for 25 years. 20 of those years was in traditional brick and mortar. Um, my last five years, I was the CEO of a bank called Diamond Bank. Um, a top retail bank before we sold or we merged to Access Bank to create the largest bank in terms of number of customers in Africa, about over 40 million customers. Um, and in my time at um, Diamond Bank, we foc focused on you know small businesses, uh, um, financial inclusion, and and providing mobile banking services to the um, on the bank. And so after the merger with successful merger with Access Bank, I saw the great opportunity to go further because I I think one of the things that I learned was that there's a limit you put there's a limit to how far you can go with um, brick and mortar, especially when it comes to things like financial inclusion and providing more services banks and and with also legacy systems because even like we had our systems were quite new in comparison to what you found in Europe. We are becoming legacy systems. There's a limit you could do the mobile banking application. So for us, it was a great opportunity to you know, start on an, should I say, on an um, um, clean slate. So and and that's why we we wanted to build like the application from the back, from the ground up. We wanted to build the service around what people were doing and not do it the way back do it, which is get a banking application and retrofit it into retrofit it into how people are. Doing things, and so it was, for us, it was finding partners that could actually help us, you know, start start from start from a clean slate, build the solution so that we would actually get more inclusion because you only get more inclusion when you build systems around um, around people and and like um, 
like one as well, we started actually building the solution. Um, I just a month after COVID started and we had lockdown, and which actually proved the model that you actually build the systems, if um, build the systems even if remotely, and work with a partner that like you don't have to in the traditional physical 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 office. So it took us a year to you know build out um, the banking application, the solutions. And then last year, July last year, we actually launched the product. And without any marketing so far, we've been successful. We've also scaled the platform as well quite easily as well. And so, um, and, and one of the things I mean, I think we've been able to do a couple of firsts in Nigeria, which is one, um, small businesses being able to open bank accounts or business accounts without actually going to a physical location. That is one. Second part was also building business support services around the banking application and so now it is so now you have businesses that not who do who who have their their their, their banking services on the app on a, on a mobile phone no they actually carry their business around with them so it's not just their banking services but business support services as well and, and i think this this couldn't have been achieved if we didn't have you know a platform that allowed us to put things together, API and with, and with APIs and with minimum effort and all cloud based. So great to be here and great to be telling the story. I have, um, yes, and I am married, three children. Uh, one is in university, two is about to finish A levels, and a love child, 11 years old, I just gone to boarding school and she's finished. Um, mommy and daughter have stopped and crying about facing each other. <laughs> And it should be. <laughs> so we we this is a, a Finrac conference. So um, we'd like to, and, and, and I can tell you, the majority of the talks are very technical, deep technical talks, and the audience is technical. But it it, it was interesting for us to uh, have the, the the big picture perspective. So bring this two two sure. successful CEOs, uh, um, um, entrepreneurs who who been in the in the business, and and and, and allowed us to understand how this how, platform how, fits fit on the on the on the big picture. How how, how, how this platform manages to to work, work with the other parts of the organization. So that, that's what we wanted to understand. And, and my first question. Would be um, um, why did you why did you choose Finrac? So, who's going? I don't know who wants to start. Okay, I mean, I'll so, start. Go ahead. So I'll go first. You know, like, first of all, I mean, like we're a startup, and so when you're a startup, um, for us, we wanted to leverage uh, technology and what technology offers. One, I think the first one was like as a startup, <laughs> your cash flow is very very. I mean, like your cash flow is cash flow is king, and so you wanted to scale up. I remember what, like, I mean, like when I started buying, when I started buying, I mean, when you bought in a banking application, it was a huge capital investment, and if you, and then you needed to get to, like, I remember we needed to get to fifty thousand customers before we even broke even on the cost. Now you could afford to do that as a start. I mean, like Sparkle. So we wanted to first of all build a banking application that first of all allowed us to to maximize our raised investment was one the second one was we also wanted one from a, like the cloud based because very very important we didn't want any servers we didn't want anything that would actually restrict our, our ability to work anywhere that we wanted to work third pricing was very very key but pricing is also a function of how much you pay up front and then the fourth and the most important was speed to market as well it took us i mean from the time that we we had the discussion at the time we actually launched the market with a much shorter time um, compared to other projects that we had done. So for us, that was, and the third, the, the final bit was that flexibility, being able to actually customize it the way you wanted to customize it and not having a fixed solution, a take it or leave it, with take it or leave it solution. So that flexibility, that time to market, the ability to scale as you go, and the, the price point for the value, for the, for the, and it was a new brain of us. Uh, so I I, I, I think Uz, Uz, Uzoma has uh, has uh, kind of uh, answered the right uh, I think um, 
issues. Uh, I think it was something about pricing, and and I would only add that uh, being able to you know kind of own the solution and, and move it wherever we want to go for us was a, a key decision, and how fast we could you know uh, personalize it or customize it to our needs and not be constrained by by a software or a solution that, uh, you know, at the end, you know, hinders the way you want to uh, position your product or your brand or how fast or slow you want to go. So for us, I think that that, that was very important. But uh, Uzuma was very, very right on saying, you know, price being being bootstrapped, you know, you, you, need, you need to um, make every dollar uh, uh, you know, be useful, and, and in that sense, it was a right decision, and, and I don't regret it any, any, one single moment. I think one makes so, it. I think one makes a very good point about yeah. um, going as fast as you want to go, because one of the things about you know traditional applications is that you have to wait for releases before you get what you want. You need to order all to start customizing it, and then you get you risk. You know, like when it comes to the new date. Because you've customized the solution, it's very difficult to really get the right object. So I think mean, that whole the whole feeling like allows you to go as fast as you want without any disruption in the future about any future releases. And that's very, very key. Great. So the great great takeaways from to the community, the the, the cost effectiveness of, of the open source of Tinerac versus uh, a proprietary core banking solution that we know that it's very expensive. The, the time to market. So having a platform that is ready and, and, and with a minimum customization and you, you are ready to go to market and the ability to own and to make it yours, it's something uh, that, that it's interesting and, and it's valuable. I think Valentin is going to post a question whatever you want, Valentin, just post it, I, I will read it. Um, the, the next question is, so if you are, um, what, what are the things that, that, that Finiract uh, needs to, how, how do you see the, the, the system itself? It, it's, and, and, and what things do you, you do, do you think that needs to be improved uh, as a platform so the community can take care and, 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 and hear the users? And, and listen to the clients and the user what they need. Um, I, I would say w w once you, you 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 take the core and start building on top of it, I think everybody ends up on a product of their own. So I, I think each of us now has a version of of Finerac that you know it's it's. Um, individually different from from all, although we share a lot of of uh, base software i think at the end everybody that starts out from finerac and starts developing on top of it we end up with our product of our own and so you know we just uh, keep going from there so i, I think as, as a base start i think or what i uh, the, the 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 software that i used to start at that, that version uh, three years ago i think was sufficient for any fintech uh, to start, you know, a reliable and, and, and uh, business. Um, probably after that, I think a lot of improvements have gone on top, but, you know, it's an open platform API. Um, basic functionalities are there, you know, so I think uh, as a standard uh, platform to, to, to start and grow, I think it's, it's sufficient. I don't know what Uzuma, there you have. There's a question there. How do you evaluate that there's a demand for the lending platform and do you first create client profile? Well, so I, I think in the case of Wancho, uh, we already knew that you know the market was there. That we had already defined a product. We just needed uh, a core software to let us, you know, uh, manage the loans and, and do the amortization tables. And we, we developed a, a middleware with all the rules. And then, and then uh, um, a web application where we do all the lending. So, okay, so I mean, I think. Yeah. But, Go ahead, but, 
Yeah, to add to what we said, I guess, you know, like what, one thing I would like to see, because I mean, like one said, that, I mean, like people are doing different things with their, with their own version of funeral, of funeral. Um, and so Sam, it would be good, like if there was a platform in which we could see what is happening, what new things, are, what new innovations are coming from different, different places. So that would actually now shorten time to market in terms of product development. So like something might be going on in, 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 in South America that we can actually customize and adopt in the Nigerian market and in African markets that might, might, that might enhance, you know, customer experience as well. And also create more, should I say, value to that um, funeral ecosystem. So I think just, you know, a way to, with, with all that innovation going on, how do I tap into and leverage that to adopt in my own, in my own space? Exactly, the, the, the cross pollination of ideas from, from the community. Be, being leverage of being uh, part of a global community uh, of, a, of a product that, be, that is being used by uh, thousands of financial institutions even uh, across the, the globe. So uh, innovations that you can find in, in, in Latin America, you can export to, to Africa and Asia or vice versa. But that is that is something that I, I always uh, look and, 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 and really appreciate about this community. I, I, I would add, Javier, that I think an area that we need to develop more on the platform is the funding. I think the way, you know, fintechs uh, are being funded, how we connect to uh, peer to originator platforms and how do we sell the, sell the loan book to investors and how we track those assets to investors. I think there's a lot of, of uh, space to develop uh, solutions there and, and how easy it is to, you know, to be able to post loans to uh, platforms like Mintos, Bonsters, uh, Get Income, uh, Percent in the States, you know, all of those platforms that need uh, API integration on how you sell the loans to the marketplace and the marketplace you know sees how we're the loan book is performing i think there is a, a something where this community could could focus and and have a, an edge or a lead over other more standard platforms and and and, and you know i think there's a space there to to develop the product so you 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 see uh your, your company as a, as a big um, um, assets generator that you, once you generate the asset, you just, you turn turn back, you sell the asset and go back and, and generate a new one. And, and, and that's how you roll your business. And, and, and exactly. now with all and these so, platforms. So you need to be able to integrate into those investors or founders or platforms that are actually funding the loan book and, and there has to be information flowing back and forth on what you're originating and what they're buying and how it's performing. So um, I think um, the, the, the ecosystem should look at platforms like Crossland and um, in Germany and stuff like that and see what they're doing and see how we can bring those into the open source uh, into Finland. So we have a question from Ganesh. Uh, what are the limitations of going to market with an open source and a traditional system? Is there a possible market crash that is going to move away from the traditional fintech? So basically, what, what are the limitations uh, with open source versus traditional system? Um, I think I... I, I... I don't grasp totally the yeah. question. Me neither. Maybe you saw my. You are muted. If you want to talk. Um, um, well, the limitations. I don't know what the limitations are, but I think one. I mean, like, open uh, the traditional system. The capital outlay for traditional system is very huge. So if there's a, if if there's a, there's a up, there's a downturn in the market, your ability to like you know, I mean, your losses are your capital. I mean, like your losses are more, and your ability to um, adapt to the market is actually going to take a longer time because because those are traditional systems they have a lot of dependencies on like open source where 
the people that you depend on are actually limited and you can actually address the issue. With, um, with traditional systems, um, you're going to find a lot of people who have the same problem and the, the resources required to actually help change is going to be, going to be in demand. And so that it might take a bit longer. So that, that's what I see. Uh, there's a question from Sean McKinney, but I think that it's a, it's a pretty much technical. Basically, the question is around um, and, and if you are contributing back your the, the things that are developed for your company to the community or some of them. Uh, what, what is your, I think, your, your feeling about I think, that? Yeah, yeah, I think we, we have... We have um, Authorized by the pushback of, of improvements into the community. Um, my, my biggest concern, and maybe Javier, you can help me on that one. But my my biggest, probably the biggest downside of of uh, of using the open source and and customizing to our needs is that future releases are hard to incorporate into our solution. And and maybe Javier, that, that's even a question I have. What would be the best way to because once you start, once you start changing the which you constantly do because the business starts moving in different directions, we end up in in, ver, in versions that are not easily merged with the most updated version of the Finer Act. And so I think that's the biggest issue in my in my opinion of. Uh, of using uh, Finer Act in general is that uh, you know it's difficult then to take back any new releases into your own uh, version. Yeah, well, that's that's a trade-off that we always have. On do we have like a, a um, 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 approach of forking, just taking a new direction of the of the software and and, and don't look back. Or, or be upstream first, which is we stay with what the community has, and whatever we, we do, we contribute back. That 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 is that I think that that's one of the for, for us is the best approach to be upstream and try to contribute as much as you can. And sometimes you can't because uh, the community won't accept the the contribution, or it's not, or it's going to make a, a big change. But uh, it's 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 a trade-off, yeah. uh, and sometimes you need to do things that are not in direction of the community, and sometimes the community takes some direction that is not on, it's not what you need, what you want. And then you need to bring some um, features or upgrades that you don't need or are are going to collide with the things that you already have. But staying staying on top of the community and, and, and making sure that you are running the last version is something that, that you should be doing. Anybody should be doing that. And, and although they, yeah, but but but, 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 but I find you yeah. don't go look, 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 don't go but, but but I but I find that in practice technically I'm, almost impossible. I think I I, I might be wrong there in answering to James yeah. is that at, at the end you know. Uh, once you, once you take off on your version, it's, it's the challenge is that you have to keep on 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 top of your, up, your upstream developments, and so I think it's now up to Quancho to be putting or plugging in new features uh, that we think are necessary and being you know innovation is on our side. I think it's not on the community side. Once once we take off with our version, it's us the challenge is that we keep on top of the innovation. And I find it hard to give back, and I think it's even harder to to pull back what the the community is putting in the latest version. And and if anybody has ideas on, around that, I'm more than willing to see how you know we can either give back or or be able to use more. Your freeze one. Yeah. So, yes, yes, James is us, it's giving a practical example. And, and so, so um, Zoma. Yes. I know that you've been uh, a steward yeah. and been uh, a voice and recommending other CEOs to, to join the open 
movement, but uh, an overall, do you think do you, that, do you, what would you tell to your other colleagues about open source and versus uh, um, proprietary systems? It's something that you, you are uh, uh, spreading the world. What do you say to other CEOs about open source? Well, I'll tell you that beyond, I mean, like, I mean, and let me speak from a developing, the developing market. Uh, what you will find is that each environment has it has its own context and different stories. So, like the, the infrastructural problems that you have, or the problems or or segment customer problems you have in in Nigeria, are completely different from the ones you have in Ghana, just down the road, or the ones you have in, in other parts of Africa. And so, it's very difficult to get a to to use a, a traditional business system that will address most of the issues, the customer issues. In a different environment, and, and and that's the advantage of open source. It allows you to understand, first of all, understand who your what your customers are, and tailor a solution around it. It's very very difficult, and it be very difficult and very expensive to customize traditional global system to address, should I say, two million people in a particular in, in a particular environment. With open source, you can do that, and you can do that in a cost effective manner. Because in the whole idea of trying to, you know take financial services down to the bottom of the pyramid, it must be one that makes economic sense. Because once you start, you know, once you, uh, and the problem with, with traditional applications is that the more you customize them, the more expensive they are, and you can't pass on those costs to the people that you're trying to serve. And so open source, I think open source, especially in developing markets, or should I say, even in testing new markets and new areas, if you want to do tests, you want to like you know do tests in a very cost effective manner and that's i think that's that's the advantage of open source and that's what i don't see is it allows you to experiment you know in africa i think in our market the problem with experimenting it costs a lot of money but if you can find a way to experiment and test and learn you can do so many of them and that, i think that's the advantage of open source great yes um testing and learning fast and, 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 and in, a, in an expensive way, it's something that makes a lot of sense of today's business, the internet era and, and all the communication. So um, we have uh, less than less 10 minutes. minutes. I know if we have, uh, we have a lot of comments um, from um, Ed and James and, 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 a, and a nice invitation at the end of the event, uh, 2013 UTC, we have like an unstructured session with what we call a birth of a feather, uh, where we just hang out and, and in a traditional event, we will have a beer or whatever drink you want, and we will hang out. But in this, uh, we can just, you're invited to come uh, to, 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 to the birth of a feather, and we can just have an unstructured uh, conversation. But um, I will see if there is any other question in the community. Uh, Ganesh is asking if, if do you feel that the, the, the market it's, it's now moving to open source? Uh, the, the fintechs are adopting open source broadly or do you, do you, is that a sensation as a feeling that you have? Well, I would say that a lot of people are asking more questions about it, unlike before. So if you take five years ago and today, people are actually, and, and just, just to support what I said earlier, people want to move fast because, you know, the, the environment is changing. You know, we woke up one day and we had COVID. And so, like, you know, like you need new systems that can adapt to changing markets very, very quickly. And so people are beginning to say, okay, what's the fastest way to do this? How can I have my, how can I, how can I be, how can I be, how can I, be, how can I how can I become more independent? I think what, one of the things that COVID has has taught us is that we have to we have to be we have to depend on people. But we if we can if we can increase our independence in certain areas where we don't need to, then you know like we can be more we can be more responsive to the market. And so and that's why people are, are beginning to ask more. Okay, what are the solutions or what are the things out there that gives me that capability of being independent? And you know, charting my own, and being responsive to my market, and and staying, on, staying, and being sustainable. And I think that's why we are getting a lot of people, especially because, especially as a lot of transformation is happening, like old old businesses have to, you know, um, change their, their their 
their processes and the, or, the, or the way they work very, very quickly. You can't use traditional ways to do that. You need to look at look for new ways, and you need, you need to look for new ways and new markets, and, and open source is one of them that has always been there, but now it's now becoming a main way of actually staying ahead of the game. Uh, in, in Colombia, at least, or Latam, I think more people are asking, but I still see a lot of uh, uh, fintechs or lending fintechs just developing from scratch, which is, uh, I think, a, a waste of resources if they can, with Cineract, um, you know, um, get to a level of a product, you know, that if you're going to develop it yourself, it's going to take you a couple of years or even more. So, um, yeah, I, I think a lot more needs to be uh, shared and to people to understand the benefits of it. I think we need to do a lot of more of, of, of teaching and, and helping people really take smart decisions because I still see a lot of, of, of entrepreneurs starting from scratch their, their software. And, and I think, you know, there's a great tool here that can be used. And so. That's improving themselves, but we build everything from scratch. <laughs> okay. Um, James Daly has a question. Izoma, uh, good to see you again. We met in Lagos a few years ago. Um, I'd like to ask you about your efforts around the green bank and carbon financing. And can you share some requirements with the community around this? I think some folks would be interested in helping to solve climate change with a project that sits on top of Finerac functionality. Okay, um, that's, an, that's an interesting question. I don't, I mean, like one of the things that, you know, and, I, and that's an area that we have interest in, but we don't have like, the knowledge or the capability. And so I'm open to a discussion on how, or how that can be done because even as digital, I mean, as a digital platform, we are already, I mean, like our carbon footprint, I mean, we're trying to make sure that we, 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 are, we are aware of our carbon footprint, but we don't, we, we don't have the expertise or the skill or the resources to, you know, to take that, to take that further. So that, that's an area that we'd be interested in, we'd be interested to find out because we are, I mean, first of all, we're not only are we digital, we're paperless, and we're also trying to, you know, like use more uh, renewable energy to run our business than, uh, than most traditional outfits. So it's, it's an area that, I'm not very conversant about, I can't speak much about, but it's an area that, you know, that we would like to also see um, how far we can, can go. Awesome. Um, I know if there's any other question from the audience. You can just put your questions in the chat. Okay, if not, um, I would like to thank, thank you, Zoma and Juan for, for your time. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting view from the top of, the, of, of, of two successful uh, startups in the FinTech space in two different uh, regions, but that we are sharing the same core, which is uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the most exciting things about this, this, this community is that we, we work together, we, we, we can have people from every, everywhere in the world doing things that are kind of different but have some similarity and we can share it with the same platform. So um, if there's no more questions, Thank you for your time, Soma and Juan. And, and we have the next session in 10 minutes. I will put a link to the next session there. And you are welcome to extending Finirac accounting using Odoo. Oh, that's our next. Something, Soma, you know. Yes, exactly. That's why I smile. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And see you all around. Bye bye. Yes.